Welcome to Total Fit Heads. Serious fitness for not so serious people. Come on, I always say the first hi. Hola. Ah, I was waiting for you. That's fine. Hi, Max. <laughs> hi. How are we doing? How are we feeling? Good. Great. How are you? For everybody who joined us at the normal time when I started the podcast that we published, we were staring <laughs> at each other for a solid minute before starting. Is that a Just minute? Love to kick it off. What? Yeah, that's that's good stuff. That's a thing. Oh, have you heard that thing where you you answer the series of 40 questions, is it? And then you stare at the person for five minutes straight, and then afterward you're supposed to be in love? You do what? Yeah, it's a formula for love. Start from the beginning. Oh, I don't have that much information on it. I just know it's a series of questions that are very specific <laughs> and intended to be uh, something that makes you vulnerable. And then you stare into each other's eyes. And it's supposed to initiate love. Let's do it. Oh, okay. Sweet. Let me just look it up. Ask I questions, think there are whole podcast based eyes. on this. That's what did, I just did. You googled up. it. Ask questions, eyes, and it came up. Thirty-six questions designed to help you fall in love with anyone. Wow. <sighs> These are not great questions. What? And they're broken up into sets. This is weird. We love sets and reps. Let's let's ask them over and over again. Get those reps in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we just asked the same one question over and over again. <laughs> really trying to fall in love. <laughs> you have to progressively overload the love. <laughs> you progressively overload your feelings. I totally buy that. Yeah. How are you supposed to get better? I think that's a fair approach, progressive overload to love. Well, then you need a recovery period where you move out and not spend any time. <laughs> I need a rest period, my God, from you. Yeah. <laughs> from you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, you got to super compensate while you're away and then come back stronger. Yeah, for sure. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, you want? Did you look it up? Is it on BigThink.com? I have New York Times. Nice. All right. You ask me one, then I'll ask you one. Oh, this one okay, sucks. But let me let me find a good one. There's a thirty six thirty six questions of FallInLove.com. Oh no, I feel like they're gonna take me. Was it the New York Times initially published this? Who is this from? I need to know. I need more data. <laughs> It should take an hour? That's going to be the whole pod. Okay. Psychologist Arthur Aaron of Stony Brook University. Stony Brook University. Created a method for doing... Blah, 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 creating a close rapport between people who have just met. Oh, but we haven't just met. But, uh, you know, it's an icebreaker question. We get to know each other. It's fine. Uh, no, wait a minute. Recently, the method, method was tested by writer... <laughs> Mandy Lynn Catron at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver after finding Dr. Aaron's questions online from the New York Times. Okay, so I think I'm I'm one article um, iteration away from yours. She proposed an event with an exchanging questions for 45 minutes. We've become progressively more intimate. So it is progressive overload. Hey! It's they progressive. Ease you in with a, what's your favorite <laughs> color? And by the end, there's like, what's your biggest regret? <laughs> yeah, no, the last question is like, do you have a condom? The, <laughs> so this, it is progressive. It's intimacy, progressive overload, and then stare into each other's eyes for four straight minutes. Ugh. I love how clinical it is. I'm like, love could be real if we scienced it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No more, no more, uh. What if, oh man, we have wow. a gotcha podcast and it's just this that we do to people <laughs> they think they're coming to talk about fitness. <laughs> and we're like, you can invite one person to dinner. Who would it be? Right. And then and then we just stare. <laughs> and like works a lot better. Uh, this podcast works a lot better in person than on Zoom. <laughs> I mean, I oh, don't and know. Then, and then it's both of us, so we're both staring into their eyes, and then then oh, and then they have to choose. Oh, that's that's delicious. I love that. 
it makes me want to invent a new broadcast where we can overlay our faces so they can stare at us simultaneously. Oh my god. We should well, I'm surprised we haven't mixed our faces on one of those like baby face maker things before. You know, have you seen those? Oh yeah. They what our kids two... would look like. Why haven't we done yeah. that? Do it right now. It, it comes out at Stanimal. <laughs> oh my god, I wish. <laughs> if then I'd be like, take the condom off. We're doing this. We need yeah, another Stanimal in this more world. More Stanimals. <laughs> it's for the good of the world. <gasps> It can only be just one. Although, if we could have a million, that would be beautiful too. A million animals. You sounds like you're making an army, and that's horrifying. Horrifying? What if it's the perfect peacekeeping army? Multi. Yeah, (laughs) I feel very safe and peaceful around one million animals. Have you seen those? Um, they do these computer, um, automated things, and they say. Who would win like three Tyrannosaurus Rexes or 18 million rats? And then they like run at each other and the computer simulates who would win and how long it would take and what would happen. They're nuts. They're crazy. It's like 500 gorillas or, you know, 2000 horses, you know what I mean? Weird stuff like that. And then they, and then they get into a little bit, it's harder because they like one Godzilla versus, and you're like, well, you know, that's kind of. We're messing with the science, but yeah, it's the science of a crazy. Godzilla. Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. What a great use of artificial intelligence. Thank God. <laughs> we finally arrived. Thank God we got to the bottom of that one. That one that one was really bugging me. <laughs> I could see this being a sports betting thing. For sure. Before you run the simulation, be taking bets. I mean, I I guess you could. We, we you, I think you can just enter your own. Should we do? <laughs> I don't know how they do it, but we could. Is start it was this just available? I bets. I've seen YouTube videos, and I'm not sure what program they use to automate it or guesstimate it or extrapolate it or whatever fancy four letter word, four syllable word they use is. It's really nice because we used to have to kill 500 gorillas to find out. <laughs> What a waste. <laughs> it's like gorillas. I mean, I don't even know what to Google search. Gorillas. Well, versus I want it to be able Erex. to feed in my height, weight, my one RMs, my training background in. Oh, you want to be boxing. you? Yeah. And then put me versus you so I don't have to kick your butt, actually, because oh I might get a black eye out of it. A black? Uh, I'm not even sure how they, like, or, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to, we should, we should. Run a Writing it down. Writing it if down. they can do it for 100 mouses, they can do it for me, in which case then they would have the answer to what who to bet on in boxing. Obviously, there's well, many I variables, think... but. Yeah. What's guess... the weather like when those mice attack? Godzilla, because that's a variable. Right? Or like gorillas versus sharks. Is this, is this in the ocean or is this in the desert? Then, that's a good point. You know. Have the sharks eaten lately? Right? Are they in, in ketosis? <laughs> it's pronounced ketosis. Oh my God. Michael Brandt. Uh, I sent him a continuous ketone meter. He's nice. 100% in ketosis all the time. Of course he is. Isn't that? So far, he sent me his graph. Isn't that bad for you? Didn't we figure that out? Well, he's not eating keto. He's eating carbs and still in ketosis. I know. I need to investigate further, but it's fascinating. <sighs> for anybody who missed it, he was the founder, one of the co-founders of Ketone IQ, the exogenous ketone drink. Yeah, Towns. Yeah, Towns IQ. It's way better <laughs> with an Australian accent. <laughs> Yeah. Bannon. Remember, we went to his party, and he gave us—he was giving us shots of ketone IQ. It was—it was a wild party. We all got mocktails. We all got ketosed. <laughs> ketosed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What a relief that you went to a wellness event that had tequila. I went to an I was awesome like, Are these wellness over? event, and then it was called—I mean, I don't know if it had a name. Um, 
Luna or something. Well, the tequila is called Luna Nueva. Okay, there we go. Which I think is Spanish. Nueva means next. New. Oh. Well, maybe next. I think it I was means kidding. new moon. <laughs> yeah. And they threw You can this... only drink it with your pants down. <laughs> full moon. <laughs> oh right. New moon. Full moon. Yeah. New yeah, yeah. full moon. They did a wellness event in the Palisades this past weekend. I went, Spags couldn't go, unfortunately. And it was spectacular. Uh one guy did a cold plunge. One guy. Are you friends with him now? Did did you immediately introduce yourself? I wa- I went over to him and then he like turned and walked the other way. His back was turned. He didn't like diss me. His giant imposing yeah, it, back was turned because obviously he's back. very fit and attractive because he does cold plunges. Oh yeah. Oh Knew it. yeah. Knew it. That's awesome that he's the, like he sent Max sent me video photo of this event and everyone's very trendy dressed and sipping on their cocktails and <sighs> I expected zero people to be cold plunging. Extremely trendy. They did yoga uh earlier on in the day. But they were just I mean we were tequila ing. <laughs> tequila is the unofficial official drink of crossfitters. Yes, I always I I meant to ask you about this. Why? Supposedly, it's about 10 calories less per shot than compared uh-huh. to vodka or whiskey. But I don't know if I believe that. I think it varies based on really what brand and how much alcohol in it. And it, the clearer an alcohol is, the less crap you're going to feel the next day. So I've heard. So that little bit of yellow, you probably should be having vodka. You probably should just shut up and have a stout. <laughs> you know what? Make it a burger. <laughs> Make it a burger. Ugh. Well, just, just just do a couple hot dogs. You might as well. I, you you said you said a mouthful. Uh, yeah. First of all, is there any difference in the fact that tequila is from a fruit? Is agave a fruit? Plant. It's a plant. Plant. Uh, versus no. a wheat. But I think also it pairs well with lime, which should theoretically blunt a glucose spike, which you're not going to get from alcohol anyway. Mm. Alcohol will also blunt a glucose spike. I think it's just the lowest calorie, broiest thing you can do that's but, the closest to health as possible while being still poison. Yes. For the record, it's poison. But if I was going to ingest this poison... <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but is like there's different levels of tequila as well as someone who's yeah. recently been to Mezcal. a tequila event <laughs> i feel like i can speak from a certain level of informed knowledge there's mm. blanco reposado which means next and and yay oh also sidebar we were trying to think of a fun tequila event a name for a tequila event and we were just spitballing. And we're throwing a bunch of ideas around. And I said, what if you called it Anye Hose? Like Anye dash Hose. And they were like, nah, it's not very good. And I was like, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, you're not invited. <laughs> well, I'm leaving. <laughs> I thought it was so funny. They were like, what about like Sunday salutations? I was like, Anye Hose. <laughs> Um, anyway, so does that change anything in the nutritional information? I'm sure it does. And yeah, what I do not know. Blanco nutritional. I don't even know what to look this up. What about mezcal? Blanco or silver tequilas are the healthiest because the darker aged tequilas are often aged in barrels. You don't. Yeah, yeah so you don't need to be way- drinking wood. The way alcohol is aged, as I understand it, is you stick it in a barrel and then it goes in and out of the wood depending on the temperature outside. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's in and out of the wood. Yeah. Right? Am I, is that not right? They rotate the barrels too, right? To kind of swoosh it around in there, probably. 
I think so. But we're the, sciencing really hard. The color right now. and the taste and the flavor is from the yeah. um liquid, you know, the the And the inside of the barrel is charred. Yeah, so that's part of the flavor. They We got to do another uh, tequila. That sounds cancerous. I mean, obviously it's poison. They age stouts <laughs> too in oak barrels. In bourbon whiskey barrels, whatever. Right, that's the same thing. Whiskey, when it goes into the barrel, is clear. Yeah. Which, I've had unaged whiskey. It looks like vodka. It tastes like vodka. (laughs) What's your favorite vodka? What? Oh, uh, Vladimir, because I use it to clean my windows. (laughs) Oh, very nice. You don't like vodka? Never? What a waste. No. Wow. There's so many better tasting things. What the heck? Vodka tastes like it should be cleaning something. What's your favorite vodka? I feel like you're getting the wrong kind of vodka. Uh, yeah, oh, I, you you mean like when you have a whipped cream pinnacle vodka? <laughs> First of all, there was a couple of years there where I loved that whipped cream pinnacle vodka and everybody else we did all too. Did. And if you're if you're <laughs> There's two types of people in this world. People that say, admit that they loved pinnacle whipped cream vodka and, and dirty liars. <laughs> and adults. And adult liars. <laughs> I don't that know. I thought... Uh, pinnacle whipped cream vodka. vodka was clearly invented so that overage people can get underage people drunk. <laughs> well, I don't know about the first part of that sentence but yes clearly so underage people can get have a couple of pinnacle vodka shots but i mean bartles and james i remember those being delicious my mom would have them in the back porch of the family friend's house shout out to the grinnicks and shout oh we brought up my mom i brought up my mom do you remember bottles timing. and james no i don't know if i ever had that one what is it called i mean bottles it was a james? wine cooler wine coolers were were to seltzer level Whenever my mom was turning up, which was Bartles that one time at that porch. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I remember Zima and I remember. Uh, I have a Zima in my fridge right now. Shotgun it. No, don't do that. Oh my God. No, 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 no. You got to save that for a special occasion. I know. Well, I've been. <laughs> you know, it tastes like a, it tastes more like a beer than a seltzer. It's a weird experience to have a Zima now. It really does taste like clear beer, which was also a thing. Did you, you remember clear beer? Uh, no, I remember clear Pepsi. I think they're around the same time. There was this crystal trend. Wave. Trend. Crystal, crystal trend. wave. Crystal me- uh, wave. Uh, anyway, what happened to wine coolers? They were. I think, I think they were uh, not. They were not cool because they were unmanly and. But the now we've manly fied. Like... Yeah, they were they were high calorie seltzers. Is what they are. Oh, you know what they are now? Beatbox. Have you seen them? Yes, I did a brand deal for Beatbox, and I. That's why I've seen them too them because they very hit people much. Like... <laughs> it's very great. We love Beatbox. <laughs> I literally. Yeah. Uh, it, it's it's so funny. Like I've done some weird alcohol endorsements over the years. Cannonball. Uh, beatbox and the ones that have like sort of sort of not like i guess i call it like specific flavors um some people hate it and some people like love it like cannot get enough of it not a lot of people that i met loved cannonball whiskey i mean it's discontinued now so i guess not a ton of people in the world like cannonball whiskey but did it make it it was like a spicy they went for like a very spicy rum which i think was a tough palette choice on a lot of people but once in a while someone would come over the house and be like whoa what is this and i'd be like you're getting nine bottles (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah that's how i felt about red stag i don't know if they still make it oh they do wow i thought for sure this would get discontinued black cherry bourbon i was like who is that target market 
no dudes that drink bourbon are going to be okay with black cherry and no women that like black cherry are going to be like, yeah, let me shoot back some bourbon. Except me and Kesha <laughs> are the two people that are their target market. But I guess both of us are keeping them alive. Good for you. Fight the good fight. I don't think I've ever had There's, it. Jim Beam has a honey one too. I guess it's fine now. We don't have gender roles any longer. Especially Everyone when it comes to alcohol. can drink Bartles and James. <laughs> I'm sure my dad snuck one. We didn't let Wayne see. He was too manly. He he wanted icy light and he would have the kids bring it to him. No, icy heavy for sure. Iron City. No, we don't do this light garbage. <sighs> I don't know if I have. I don't know. If you feel like you're bringing up a lot of weird stuff that I've never had. Did you ever have um, Red Dog beer? No. Right. Is there a red dog on it? Yeah, Bulldog. He's red. He looks mad. It sounds like, familiar. It's. I think. Why it's, do I feel I, like? Oh, Mad Dog is a well, forty. Red Dog Lit, beer. Malt liquor. Oh yeah, malt liquor. Aren't um. Wasn't Fireball get in trouble because they uh, called themselves a whiskey and in certain size bottles they were selling malt liquor versions of themselves? Really? Oh, yeah, because they were less alcohol or something. I also heard they got in trouble that they have ingredients that are illegal in other countries with the U.S. It's like, eh, it's fine. Well, there's a lot of that. Have you seen an orange Fanta in Europe versus an orange Fanta in the U.S.? It's horrifying. In Europe, it's just an orange with a straw in it. And here, children in, die. In, in Europe, yeah. <laughs> if they're not strong enough. That's how we weed them out. <laughs> in Europe, an orange Fanta is like orange. It's essentially like carbonated orange juice. It's delicious. In, yeah. in America, orange Fanta is like glowing red, glow in the dark, orange, you know, yellow, red. It's like... You know, it looked like it's like a yeah, cartoon version ooze. of nuclear <laughs> ooze. Yeah, exactly. It's like pretty wild. Ugh. If we're going healthiest alcohol, so we've landed on tequila or vodka. Yeah, so you that's what I was asking. Is it, is it healthy? Be <sighs> I thought the health... I thought what it boiled down to, as I understood it, the health, the, the health really came in was with the mixer. So, right. yes, they're all with... terrible, but people are underestimating how many, like, drinking nine Coca-Colas or drinking right. a bunch of those super sugary um, fruit juices or whatever. I thought that totally. was always the big, the big thing to, like, quote, unquote, watch out for. Now, obviously, what you watch out for is the booze also <laughs> okay that aside yes if you're talking so it's kind of like when you're talking about like should i fix my diet or working out or take supplements it's the same thing it's like get rid of the mixers mm -hmm. then you know pick between tequila or vodka and then end on gin because you'll have less of a hangover slightly maybe but like you don't need to care about that if you're putting full calorie coke into it you know uh-huh so actually but, yeah but a light beer i mean how many calories in a light beer it varies and what's messed up is that the more calories they take out of the beer the less alcoholic they are so the more you calories you have to take in to get an equal amount of drunk and so it's actually a lie when you get to those 64 ones the ones that are super low cal or like those uh -huh. bud next hey that's the third time next has come up and, but it's not the spanish version and so <laughs> and so you have to figure out like there's a ratio of amount of drunk you can get to the least amount of calories and that ends up that you land on straight liquor go to get drunk not fat.com it's fantastic it's great yeah didn't know that existed if it still does since college. Still there. Ever yeah, clear. So they've done the calculating here. Yeah, right. Your best drinking pure ethanol. Great. Great. And now, now and you're now, blind. Without dying. <laughs> Kettle one. I mean, these are all tied, though. They're just like. Right. And yeah, we're talking about the top of the pyramid where it's like you got to. 
And there's that peppering in of if it's been aged longer, you're probably going to feel a little crappier tomorrow. So we think about that. Mm. Vodka diet. But down here, very close there, there's also a range it. where mm. I'm like, okay, I do want a beer, but maybe it should be a light beer, but not a super light beer. You know? Mm. What do you look for in a beer? I mean, at that point, deliciousness. Yeah. You love those pitch black dark brown stout peanut butter yeah that looks like petrol peppercorn yeah it looks, oil yeah it looks like okay castor motor oil in a can i mean they're, they're not good. a fan now have we had the guinness argument you hate guinness right well i've never been to the factory so i've heard that that's was different that was my follow-up question every <laughs> single person is like it's way different way different at the brewery factory brewery oh right i said factory it's definitely a brewery the beer store (laughs) the alcohol store (laughs) why do you think it is it bums me out that i've never been and never tasted it because they're so adamant that it's like crazy different i think they say it's like it's like drinking a milkshake like it's very sweet and delicious and everyone has said it yeah. My non connoisseur friends that were like raving about it, clearly convincing me. Huh. Why why haven't you gone? Oh, I don't know. I schedule a weekly podcast that I keep up with and it's just been you well, know, middle... trying to fit it around that. <laughs> Fair enough. That's smart. <laughs> yeah. We should do a live one from the Guinness in factory. Done. We should also call it the Guinness Factory, and they're like, "Uh, yeah, whatever." <laughs> Stupid Americans. <laughs> <sighs> the booze. All right, so I'm going down. I'm looking down at drunk oh, not fat dot com. Oh wait, there's also a get drunk not poor dot com, and it rates everything on how drunk you can get for the least amount of money. These and the pages. winner is. Wait. What? Wait. Wait. Can wait. I spoil it for you. No, give me a hint. Give me, give me, um, give me like a, ask me a question. Do you know what I mean? A question Brave. about what it is? Is it in the way of, uh, yeah, give me a hint. I'll give like, you a is hint. it a cocktail? Is it a beer? Is it a type of liquor? Is it a, you know what I mean? It has flat surfaces. This is and this is the drink, the best drink for the best value. Is that what it is? The most drunk you can get for the least amount of money. Oh, most you can drink for the least amount of money. Ugh, is it ever? It's clear? a ratio of how much you're paying out for the highest amount of alcohol concentration. Or the yeah, the least you can pay for the most alcohol. I have no idea. Franzia boxed wine, specifically the white variety. What? Yeah. Oh my god! I never would have got that. I would have. I was thinking close like a Long is Island <laughs> or a. Uh, oh, the close second is the red. <laughs> What is this? Get drunk, not poor. Dot com. Is that what you said? Yeah. Oh, this one looks like it is not long, no longer up. It's saying connection is not private. I'm trying to steal my data. But it was the same people that ran the first one, so I don't know why one's working and not the other, not the other one. But, but anyway, yeah. I was thinking that's... like, um, like a, a right how like a high concentration of alcohol per drink or whatever but yeah the fact that you can get a whole box of wine for 10 bucks yeah it's about the volume that you're getting we used to go to those carlo rossi jugs do you remember this yeah i have one in my studio <laughs> it's got six it's got to be at least six year old wine in it Kim nonstop and I did a wine power hour for Valentine's Day, and I we didn't finish it. I, it's still in my studio. And how <sighs> weird, right? Wonderful. 
It's what do you mean? It's aged wine. Don't make that face. Now it's worth more. Aged wine. Let's get some fresh wine in here. Uh, Something from this yeah. year. <laughs> it's just vodka. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if you're going beer, what are you doing? I mean, if it's... I really like those, like, Pilsners, Belgian beers, those golden those golden mm. German beers, my favorite. Like, okay. the ones they give you right German after you buy a cup of German and mountain. Belgian are very different. Well, they both speak Do not German, conflate right? them. What? Don't they speak... No way, they speak French. Wait a minute, what do they speak in Belgium? Swiss? Swiss yes, Swiss? French. French. English. <laughs> Everyone speaks English. Belgian beers, usually very good. Pilsner's usually very good. Regular old German beers, usually very good. Um, you like a drinkable session beer, is what you're saying. There was this one beer that I used to get, and I, and I loved it. And... It's a um, Bud Light. It was <laughs> apparently like the essentially the Bud Light of. <laughs> oh really? It was. I've called... heard Foster's is like Bud. Of oh, Foster's Australia. is trash in Australia. That's what they say. Uh, it was called. What do you think o of it? Ota Kringer. O T T A K R I N G E R. It was this yellow, like a bright yellow can. It was in is in Vienna, and it was so drinkable i don't know like how else to say it, it was, like, drinkable spectacular. <laughs> that's so funny that's a made-up word that's a made-up <laughs> word for marketing and you're like ah oh, yes this is a thing that's not as bad as when coors light was like we're the coldest beer around and i'm like yeah they look cold and then i was like wait a minute max turn your brain on why is it the <laughs> coldest beer what does that even mean and like chipped cold, you know what I mean? And I'm like, uh, is it though? Like what? What? And how does that make a difference? Born cold. Do you remember that when they were saying that they? Oh my it god, cold? it's so stupid. And the blue lined cans. I know that was that was out when I wasn't even drinking. Let me be clear: I wasn't <laughs> cool in high school. I wasn't sampling these things. No one was offering me beers, but I knew oh, the marketing. Wow. Yeah, that was interesting, having a dad cringer. that owned a beer distributor as a kid, because all right the kids that wanted beer in high school would come to me and be like, be like can you hook fall us off up the with truck? beer? Yeah. <laughs> it's just spilling out of my dad's pockets when he comes home. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then I had like, to explain uh, to them. <laughs> what? Like Andy Dufresne and Shawshank. Do you remember how he would like spill the dirt into the... Oh, yeah. And he was dropping it in the yard. Yeah, through his <laughs> pants. It's like that only with cans of beer. And he's like subtly like, no one's going to notice. <laughs> <laughs> he's peppering it in my bedroom. Oh, that's funny. Ugh. My dad is the one guy that's super obsessed with underage drinking. Because if that happens, because of him, he loses his job. Yeah. So he's, I'm the one person that... that Big has number. somewhat like a hawk watching that kind of thing and the last person to hook you up with beers also quick sidebar now that we got um you told me once that your dad suggested never to take the draft at a bar go for the yeah. bottle why is that he does and now that, by the way so that so shocked we'll me it. and that was the opposite of what i thought in my brain i'm like well the draft is probably fresher but i was yeah right also because i'm stupid so what was the reasoning? Mm -hmm. So besides selling at his beer store, which is a real thing, by the way, <laughs> he's not a brewery, he's a beer store. The beer store. To home consumption, he also stocks restaurants and bars. And he is the one that changes out the taps and sees if they're cleaning said taps or not. And they're not. Surprise. <laughs> and they get all caked up in bleh. And nobody's doing anything about it. I mean, maybe it affects the taste of your beer. Nobody notices or cares. And if they get sick, you don't think it's the beer. But since <sighs> my dad has seen it, he chooses to drink out of a can or bottle. Smart. Well, but I've recently enough. seen him switch over. I mean, he's in, he's he's getting up there now. So I think he's just like, ah, screw it. Life's too short. Time for the <laughs> pinnacle vodka. Sludge. Yeah. 
I'm switching to whipped cream. Bottles and James. Oh, I would want that on tap. P- whipped cream, pinnacle vodka, you want it on tap? Oh, my sure. God. Did you ever get those Jaeger shots on tap at the bar? You know how they have that like little machine that like yeah. ice and colds it? Does Such that ever gimm- work? Oh, yeah, because the coldest Jaeger around. Right, of course. I've never tried it. Does that ever? Does that even do anything? No, it's just a gimmick. But I, I mean, a tap of beer also feels like a gimmick maybe because it's, yeah, just coming out of a different spot. Well, it's it's a faster way to. David Dobrik made a fruit juice fountain. No, a Hawaiian punch fountain Hawaiian in punch his house. Water fountain. Cool. Yeah. It's fucking, this seems really gross. Like if water's going to It was from a up. movie. So it wasn't even... Um, yeah. Mr. Deeds, maybe? Was that what it was? No, Richie Rich? I don't remember. I have a protein dispenser in my gym. Nice. And obviously all my alcohols. That's quite the... Flex. Well, look, look what I got. Tito's. Oh, I was bad mouthing vodka, but my gluten free best friend can only have Tito's. So I'm a big fan for people that need it. How many vodka? I guess you can also have one. Free? Not all of them, but Tito's specifically is. Which is stupid because it's made out of potatoes, but other potato vodkas put gluten in their stuff. Tito specifically says they don't, and that's why we can trust them and not poison your friend more poison than you wanted to give her the amount of correct poison, (laughs) which I did poison my friend once. Same girl, (laughs) Kelsey, you know her. Uh, Uh, I was doing a video where I only ate, drank Soylent. Oh, The only thing I consumed was Soylent for 10 days, and I I was like, here, try this, because it'll be funny to get your reaction on camera. Her reaction was a very, very ill response because apparently there is gluten in Soylent. Yeah. Oops. Poison my that friend was, on that camera. That was a dark 10 days for all of us, I feel like, when you did that. Did you had to watch me. I had to watch you deteriorate ever so slowly. <laughs> Mentally, physically. I, I lost weight because yep. I lost muscle and gained fat. <laughs> uh-huh. How much depression did you gain? Un- uh, By the un- end, un- I was unmeasurable. Yeah, unmeasurable. I I was freezing it so I could eat it, like so I could chew something, so I could get some, so I could fi- still feel the mastication. Oh my god, that's so weird. No. Uh, did it, did you miss chewing? Is that really a thing? Yeah. It's really satisfying to eat something, and when you stop doing it... It's like killing my food with my teeth, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Showing it who's Probably boss. Yeah. Chewing activates your hypothalamus saying that you're fuller, and I wasn't doing that. Is that why people chew gum? I thought I don't know why people the chew opposite gum. was also true, where if you start chewing gum, you get hungry, because your body's like, what's up? I thought we were getting some nutrients. I wonder about that too, just watching the food network because you're giving signals that food is coming. Right. I bet your insulin spikes watching the food network. The food network is bad for your metabolism. You heard it here first. Sounds like a video idea. Yeah. As soon as I get a continuous insulin monitor, which I don't have. Not yet. Not yet. The future is coming. You know, when we were talking to Lee Drybaugh, the most recent guy, I mm-hmm. I thought we finally got to, well, the whole thing was interesting, but especially when we started talking about how, like, adoption of good habits is just not going to happen. And that we're, right now, the longevity world is trying to tell you these crappy things to do to live longer mm-hmm. instead of giving you some, some layer on top of the crappy things to negate them. Do you know what I mean? Like a pill that gets rid of the bad food you ate. That's what I'm talking about. Will we get to that? Oh. Huh. Instead of figuring out all the answers on what your healthy habits should be, can we get to a point where you just live your life joyously with destroying your body and we put something on top of that to counter it? I Uh, love that. Painkiller, not a vitamin. Yeah. I mean, we have virtual reality goggles now, so I suppose 
That's going to get rid of my hangover? Well, you'll be in the metaverse. What hangover? You're not really you. You're just the the thing that controls your avatar, right? Purple dinosaur, definitely. What would you be? <sighs> I'd probably be me. What? <laughs> you get to pick... You get to pick of the infinite possibilities of what visually could represent you, and you're like, yeah, oh, <laughs> freaking me. <laughs> All right, I'd be me, but I have like Spider Man powers. I could swing around. You know I mean? <gasps> no, that is the ultimate answer of, I don't want to say narcissism, like self. <laughs> 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 More like. Just hitting I don't want the to jackpot. say narcissism. You didn't. You didn't get to pick you, but, but I'm you gonna, would have picked you. I'm going to refer Whatever you to a was. therapist. <laughs> Whatever it was that decided that you're going to look like this, whether it was evolution or God or an accident, I don't know what your parents' situation is. <laughs> you ended up like you, and that's what you wanted. How awesome! Yeah, I'm pretty lucky. <laughs> I guess like a third arm or something, but nah, I don't. I don't know. I have to get custom jackets and everything. And <laughs> me, but with another arm. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you be a purple dinosaur? What dinosaur, Barney? Oh, I was just trying to be funny. That was the quickest answer I could give. It definitely needs to be a lot more thought put into it. But something, something very not a human well see that gets weird what is everybody else doing then now i'm just, <laughs> I'm just following the rules again and putting on makeup now that we're psychoanalyzing what is everyone else doing as your first question is a pretty was that my first question pretty question. sure my first question was dinosaur was your first answer but you said yeah. i said what would you really be and you said well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what's everyone else doing it was me reverse engineering the system. I need a leg up any way I can. You understand sure. the algorithm, then you can get views. You know what will get you the job interview, then you wear that purple dinosaur suit to the job interview. Right. You need a leg up. You can just get yourself another An extra another leg. leg. <laughs> I do I do two extra knees, definitely, for sure. Del so that you can sit on chairs the opposite direction like the fawns. Uh, oh, I like that. No, I meant like another hinge, so my my knee could like curl, up, my leg could curl up behind me, like a like a tail. Okay. I don't know what I would do. I think yeah, it would probably be me, but with Spider Man, like Spider Man power. I think that's my answer. Yeah. Okay. Locking it in. Weird answer. Did not really see that coming. I'd be me, but yo, you had you're you surprised where we arrived. Yeah. Yeah, and of all the powers, you're going Spider-Man? Honestly, it would probably be... I always really liked the Human Torch. I think that would be a really fun power to have. It's not too crazy. Like, you're not mind-controlling people that are taking over the world or anything, but you can fly, you can light stuff on fire. If you get you too fly. powerful, okay. you could That's theoretically... Fine light the entire atmosphere on fire and burn up the whole planet if you wanted to, but you don't need to. Uh, you just want to hold that over someone's head if they try and take your parking spot. Yeah, I'd be like, mm, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate the flying. You, you could just set yourself on fire at parties. Yeah, and somehow, I don't I don't know how they ever explain that. I mean, you know, that's that's the problem is that like, People are, people are always like nitpick uh, powers. They're like, well, if some if Superman catches a woman falling off a building and she's going, you know, nine point eight speed of gravity times mass times you know, he would like liquefy them. And I'm like, oh, well, you know why he doesn't? Because it's a comic book. <laughs> and shut up, you know. So there's times when like Human Torch is carrying people while he's flying, but the only way he flies is he lights himself completely on fire. So everyone's like, "Well, how is he doing that?" And I'm like, "Well, who cares? You know, I don't need the explanation. I just it's cool. That's why he's doing it. It's sweet. It's super awesome." 
I just came across this on Twitter where it's Tarzan from the animated movie and gotcha. he's carrying the girl, Jane, Got, and they're you, swinging so through far. the vines. You've seen this? I've no, no I've seen okay. the movie. I okay, loved this, it. Yeah, this so it's a it's a drawing of that or a screenshot of the animation from the film and they're swinging but then they circle that he both of his hands are being used to hold her and then the yep. vine is going behind them yep. in this scene and then the sh- picture next to it is from behind and then a really well still looks like drawn by Disney animation of his very muscular buttocks butt cheeks clenching the vine to oh, hold yeah. them up. Oh yeah. And the captain was just like, I think about this all the time. So that <laughs> that came up in my brain on my morning walk. And I'm really glad it's coming up again when we're talking about realistic <sighs> comic books and animation. He also like grabbed stuff with his feet. He had like hand feet hands a little bit. He would like grab yeah. vines with his like big toe. And you're like, well Which, mm, actually that's impossible. And I'm like it's well, not impossible. Actually, it's awesome. So the end. Good argument. I love that Tarzan movie. You know, I did an episode of Drunk Disney to that movie. <gasps> what a great one! Which one's you? I doing? only got hundred on Dalmatians. Oh, ugh. I there's a Phil Collins those. in sync song in that. Are you kidding me? Rosie O'Donnell sings. He went so hard. Phil Collins did on that on that uh, so soundtrack. Uh, yeah, Drunk Disney. Allie Spags. God, I People love still that. tweet me about that. So this was I, a show that too. both Max and I were on maybe five, seven, six years ago. Yours was in six years ago. Yeah. And we, you would go. Look at you and your little the show. You I was wearing a, a, a spotted bra, too. You can kind of see that I had on like a themed 101 Dalmatian bra. Oh, very um, nice. Thank you. What is he doing anymore? The drunk Disney. Crew? Oh, um, James and horror. Chelsea. They started a um a horror YouTube channel and it does incredibly well. Ah, uh, what is it called? What a pivot. Meat murder anyway, or something. I I was so surprised how big their audience was and how I still hear about people having discovered me on Drunk Disney. You, you oh, would so, just drink and watch the Disney movie and and react, which is an intellectual property nightmare, by the way. What's the copyright on that? Pink Fong just took one of my videos down because I did Baby trend. Shark. <laughs> anyway, the concept of the video is they had the three people or two two or three people in like regular hosts, and then they would have a guest person, and then they would get drunk and watch Disney movies and make crack jokes about it. And it was extremely fun to watch I and extremely fun to be on, frankly. It was one of the only ones that like sort of melded those things, you know? So many times, I mean, like you and me were doing stuff all the time. We're doing beer miles, all, you know? <laughs> that's, that's the only other instance I can imagine where it's also that fun to do and watch. But I think part of it was that they were so nice. And the concept is sort of there too of like I think I think people can sort of relate to that getting having a couple of drinks and watching Disney movies. Sure. Yeah. But it was so fun. It's so funny. And their their audience was wild. I have the same exact experience where people were like, Oh my god, you're from Drunk Tarzan. And I'm like, Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Take it. Like I can't imagine a, a higher uh phrase. Yeah. I can't wait till you get rec- recognized from one of my beer miles. I got recognized from uh, my Facebook show, Relationship Goals, recently. Nice. I was super pumped about that. Oh, it's that guy from Relationship Goals. Not even Max. No, that yeah. Wild? That's the show, not the person. That's cool. Were you with Brittany or he recognized you sans the other half? It was it was a comment on I helped my friend Kurt do his video on uh wrestling. WW professional yeah. wrestling. And I he had like one joke for me as like a his friend. Um and so it cuts to me for like a second. And I'm like, oh, oh, you know, stupid. Ha ha ha. And then everyone's like, Whoa, it's that guy from <laughs> 
That's the awesome. Guy from Felicia. Not even Max. Not even Max. No sleeves. Not even. Yeah, exactly. It was. It was pretty spectacular. Britney's boyfriend. Yeah, Britney's boy. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I love James and Chelsea. They were so nice. And uh, what was that other guy's name? Dave, I think. Dave. I think it was Dave. Yeah. Did you have fun doing 101 Dalmatians? Yeah. Well, I think we had beers. I'm trying to think now. This is clearly the alcohol episode. Yeah, it was great. And there were side games, too. It was like if if something happened, then we'd have to drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Very great. similar games. Uh, it was six years ago. Give me a break. No, I'm also, saying I was like, drunk. you know, like at a house party when they're like explaining the rules to like a like yeah. beer dice or something. I'm like, okay, so if you roll a seven, you drink. If you roll 11 or doubles, you drink. If you roll off the table, you drink. Uh, if I touch the dice before you touch the cup, you drink. I'm like, I got it. So you drink. That's you the name. That's, yeah, the, that's, like, <laughs> that's the And name then the if game. nothing's happening too much, you, you can take a sip, you know? Yeah. If you're bored, take, you can do, do a quick sip. Did you ever play that game, 7-Eleven Doubles? No. Holy moly, that was a tough game. We used to play that for Christmas in my family, but we would be with presents, not drinking. Yeah, I know. It's a whole thing. So you're just rolling dice and drinking the whole time? So there's a solo cup in the middle. One person is the roller and he points, he picks out the drinker. So I pick I I it's and so the dice sort of rotate around as you go. The 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 person who's rolling the dice. Um the way the game is played, I cannot touch the dice until the drinker touches the drink, at which point they grab the cup, drink as fast as they can, and slam it back down. As oh, soon it's as a speed thing. So and so you have about half a solo cup or maybe a third. So it's it's quickish. You know, it's not it's not nothing, but it's it's a couple of gulps. You know what I mean? Like a flip cup level. Yeah, maybe maybe right around there. And as soon as you you pick up the, as soon as the drinker picks up the cup, I pick up the dice and I start rolling. If I roll a seven, 11 or doubles, I win and you have to go again. If you slam the cup down before I roll a seven, 11 or doubles, drinker wins and I pass the dice to the next person. And that person, the new dice person picks the new drinker. If I roll yeah, off the table, I, love the ones I lose and I drink. Where the speed of your drinking indicates how the game goes and who is winning and, and has an effect on. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, uh, it's a tough one. Squirrel cage or rage cage? Have you ever played that one? It's a good one. Rage cage. Yeah, that was that was unlike a, tough a power too. hour where it's not about speed of drinking at all. You just listen to music and then we get drunk together. Slow and steady, and we're all loving, having fun with each other. Unless you throw up, then you're out. You lose. Yeah. Just kidding. Everybody wins, no matter what. I think beer pong was probably my favorite overall. If if I didn't, oh, no, it was my least favorite at a party. It's my most favorite if it was just like a couple of us sort of rotating around because it's not. Yeah, a quick it definitely game. ruins. It's not a social thing. It's like not darts a at a bar. Thing. Like yeah, ugh. exactly. It's something to do while the four of us are hanging out. It's very fun in that regard, but if it's more than four, you're ruining everything. You're an and yay or sorry. <laughs> we'll workshop it. I'm still working on yeah, it. Yeah, it's close. On it. We almost got it. <laughs> we almost got it. It's right there. We just gotta we just gotta break it. Gotta crack it a little bit. Okay, if you're having a mixed drink, if it's one of those, you know, you're at an event and they have the specialty recipes or whatever, are you gonna go mixed drink or are you still gonna say, screw that, I'm getting my German beer? German. The Germans. Um, yeah, my, my mix is like a soda. Cocktail soda with soda water or so, like a Coke or a Diet Coke? Club soda. If we're giving tips here, club soda is solid as a mixer. Diet Coke, better calorie wise, but also it's probably the evening when you're having this. So think about how it's going to disturb your sleep. Caffeine. Caffeine at that hour is also poison. I do. I was drooling a lot of tequila pineapple juices. That was excellent. Oh, I wonder how much sugar I got on that. Taste. Yeah, boy. that's rough, but also it just kills any alcohol. 
so delicious. Pineapple juice just turns everything into non-alcoholic taste. And the trick the the bartender told me was you add a little bit of lime to the pineapple to soften the acidity. And it was more acidity. Wow. I don't know why. Softens she was she was right. Hmm. Without it was worse than the one with it for sure. You do a lot of just just whiskey. I I now do just whiskey for a couple of reasons. I also just I drink a lot of Jack for a couple of reasons. One is that everybody has it, you know, and it's yeah. it's I can sip it. I like I think the taste is fine. I, I like the taste of some whiskeys, some bourbons, not all of them. I really don't like the taste of Scotch very much. In fact, really nice scotches I think are like pretty gross a lot of the time just <laughs> taste it's like astringent it's like nail polish remover i don't know why people like it it's crazy i do yeah so i just do like a jack with ice and i feel like everybody has it it's super easy it won't take that long it's not going to stress out the bartender it's not like i'm ordering nine mojitos or whatever <laughs> can you muddle some mint <laughs> nine times oh muddled mint please it, hmm. it's fine and everybody has it and that's super that's it was like a ease of execution type thing i think we were somewhere that they stopped having it because you drank all of their jack that's oh definitely happened where they're like i'm sorry dude that your last drink was all of the jack and you had to switch well okay thank you that's a nice but you can you know that's a bit of extenuating circumstances there it's not like i went to a jack daniels store and drank all of their jack daniels <laughs> they happen to be low on one specific type of whiskey jack that i drank the tail end of i didn't have three thousand jack you know but thanks thanks for thanks for that uh sure. confidence there I mean, although i will say in Washington D.C. a couple of years ago, me and a couple of my friends, we went to an Irish bar and we we did drink all of their Jameson. Oh, uh, really? Because we saw the bartender the next night, and he was like, "Whoa, what are you guys doing? You're alive!" And we were like, <laughs> "Yeah, why? What's up?" And he was like, "You guys drank all of our Jameson last night," and I was like, "Oh, that's weird. Are you lower?" And he was like, "No, and we're an <laughs> Irish bar." And then he gave us this look like, are you guys alive? How are you guys alive? And we were like, well, that's weird. Ha, ha, ha. Well, anyway, uh, DC, am I right? Politics. <laughs> it was wild. Yeah, that was a wild one. But we were we were a little rowdy. You know. Uh, I once drank a bar out of Pabst Blue Ribbon. And by that, I mean, it was a power hour. So everyone drank the bar out of Pabst Blue Ribbon. <laughs> good job i like that i mean yeah they ran out of their drinkable beer and so then they had to move on to i think they had trobe's cherry <laughs> which oh was God. like 12 percent alcohol christmas beer other options you know but it wasn't pbr good old hmm. pbr you know those pbr light no i did not know that yeah PBR is red, white, and blue, the can. And then PBR light is blue, white, and blue. It's just a lighter blue instead of the red. So everyone's like, PBR is a light beer. No, no. They make it lighter. It's pretty great. No, no. All right. So takeaways. Bottom of the pyramid is mixed drinks, heavy beers. Mm-hmm. Which, that's fine. If you're poisoning yourself, uh, enjoy the evening. And that's what I do. I have a stout. Or a Belgian. Put none of your German garbage. Next <laughs> step up on the pyramid is light beers. Be wary of the extra, extra light beers because they're probably just taking alcohol out at that point. Mm -hmm. Next step up on the period, pyramid is straight up. Uh, no, I would say it is alcohol with a mixer that's no calories, but probably still bad for you, like a Diet Coke. Mm -hmm. Diet Sprite doesn't have caffeine. That's better, but it's still fake sweetener. Mm -hmm. Next step up, just just doing shots of the alcohol because it's the least amount of calories. We're the most amount of drunk you can get. 
Next step up is having the clearest alcohol because apparently gin would be better the next morning than whiskey, potentially. I don't believe that. I, I think that's that's uh, a smear campaign by Big Gin to, uh, Big try, to gin. try to garnish. It's just my mom with a garnish. <laughs> now, where does the clear seltzer fit into that pyramid? The white oh, or the, uh... yeah, I think that's around the light beers situation for sure. That's uh, yeah. Step up. I was going to say, is it like a vodka soda? Because it's grain alcohol with soda in it. But I think they also have some other calories and fake sweetener for sure. Fake sweetener. I yeah. think a lot of times, too, some of them like some of them are malt liquors. Some of them are actually vodka sodas in a can. Some of them are. You know what I mean? So you. I would say take a look at the ingredients, see mm -hmm. what it is. Don't just listen to how it's the coldest beer. Cool. I forgot there's a bottomer part of the period, which is Bartles and James. And if you're poisoning yourself, you just might as well have a time. Where the where's boxed wine? Oh man. <laughs> yeah, shoot. That is another thing. When if you're if you're talking about no sugar wines that's huge in the biohacking community i mean mm -hmm. dave asprey will even drink a red wine mm -hmm. so where does that fit in that's probably around the straight alcohol area you're, you're getting more calories than just straight liquor but if you're going low sugar there's potential that it's better for you yeah, unless know. you know, like sulfite allergies too. You got to feel it out for yourself how you feel the next day too. Yeah, and you could have specific, aller I guess allergies. Sensitivities, a good way to put it, yeah. To sensitivities to different things. Yeah, my body just doesn't like a fine wine, so I drink Barrels and James. That yeah. makes sense. Boone's Farm is a wine, so where does that fit in the pyramid? <laughs> I no idea. This is the first time I've heard. I'm hearing of it. What the? I wrote a whole song about it. You seriously don't know what Boone's Farm wine is? Ugh. I think we were drinking different. Yeah, things. it sounds like it. You and your red dog. And I used to call it Bulldog. And they're like, what? And I'm like, Mad Dog. Wait a minute. Something with a dog. I'll just drink the dog. And they're like, mm. <laughs> cool, Max. They had to know what you mean. Yeah. So, yeah, that's my go-to. I mean, I guess, yeah. You you get to the point where you optimize so oh. far, and then you're like, oh, beer is delicious, and then I'll just have a beer. But if you're really on where, it, if you're cutting... Where margarita fit in? Well, if you're having a bro CrossFit margarita, and it's just tequila and lime... A, a, a squeezed <laughs> lime in it. Yeah, then there you're good. Otherwise... Tequila margarita mixers are all the way at the bottom, probably worse than a beer. Well, they have so the mixer is what gets you. It's so much sugar, so much gunk right. in that food. You know, it's it's neon, so it's delicious. glowing orange, glowing green, whatever. Yeah, so delicious. <laughs> all right, Godspeed, go drink. <laughs> and if you can rate and review on Apple Podcast, that helps us out a whole <laughs> lot. Let us know what you all drink. Let us know if you have some naysaying about my comparison of gin and whiskey. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>